As you said, I'm going to talk about Poisson manifolds and how to get stacks out of them. So let's begin by just talking about what our main question is. So we've had a lot of talks already about people talking about stacks in groupoids and Morita equivalents. And all of these things are very nice. Um, and I, I mean that in an honest way, not a sarcastic way. Uh, I, I, like, I like them very much. Uh, and in fact, I would like to find sort of more examples and how to actually extend this theory to more settings. So I will give a brief, a brief picture. So if we have a Lie groupoid, we can always think of it as representing some sort of categorical object, which we call a geometric stack. Right. So here, BG is just the category of G bundles. So principal G bundles, usually, is our preferred version. Right. And when we do this correspondence, something nice happens. If we look at bi bundles, then if we go over to this side, they become functors. And if you look at bi-bundle isomorphisms, they become natural transformations. So the question that I would like to ask is, what about the symplectic case? So if you have a symplectic groupoid, then we have a notion of symplectic bi-bundles. We have a notion of isomorphisms of symplectic bi-bundles. And the question is, oh, what's over here? Right? So uh, the most natural thing to think is, well, it should sort of int introduce some sort of geometry on this stack. So we already have notions of stacks. But it turns out that defining intrinsic geometry on stacks is really complicated. So if you look at the literature for like two forms on stacks, it's kind of difficult, right? So I'm going to introduce a sort of more simple way of actually kind of getting around this problem. Okay. So my two sub-questions here are what is, as I said, B of a symplectic groupoid. And then the other question is sort of what kind of singular space does a symplectic groupoid represent? So Lie groupoids, we think of them as representing singular spaces when you take the stack point of view. So what kind of singular space are we talking about? Okay. And so in order to do this, I'm going to avoid trying to talk too much about intrinsic geometry of stacks, and I'm going to basically replace the site. So normally all of this is done over a categor categorical object called a site, so a category with topology. And the typical theory is done over manifolds, right, which is a nice category. What I'm going to do is just add a little bit more to manifolds and then look at what are stacks over this new thing. Okay. So, what's the site? So, apologies for any confusion. So I've, I've had some objections about this, but I haven't fixed a correct name. So I'm going to define a category called DMAN. This is not the category of derived <laughs> manifolds. This is supposed to be DRAC. Uh, right, so I, I'm just too lazy to write Durr man. Right. Right. So what about what about the objects? Well, it should be a Dirac manifold. That's easy enough. What about morphisms? So most people here probably know that there's a lot of different ways of defining morphisms of Dirac structures. Uh, and so in my scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the morphisms pairs. So this, the first part of this pair is just a smooth map. The second part of this pair is a two-form. This is going to be a two-form on the domain. Okay? And then the last thing is there's supposed to be some sort of compatibility. 
is that if I pull back the DRAC structure along this smooth map, then what I get is this DRAC structure on the domain plus a gauge transformation by the specified closed two form. Okay? So this is backwards DRAC up to gauge transformation. Those are my maps. So the composition is kind of really the only thing you can do. So this is going to be, well, in the first component, it's just going to be F composed of G. And then in the second component, we're going to have to put a two form on the domain of G. So we just pull back beta and we add alpha. Okay? So this is a kind of like a semi direct product of smooth maps with two forms. So let's make some observations about this category. So the first one is that it comes with an actual forgetful functor. Uh, and this forgetful functor is, I mean, forgetful. It loses a lot of data. But one thing that it does do is it keeps co-limit, or sorry, limits. So it sends pullback diagrams to pullback diagrams. So the other observation is that there's another functor. Right? This one goes from manifolds into this category. And what does that do? Well, if I have a smooth map of manifolds, then I'm just going to send this to the tangent Dirac structures. And then the two form part is just going to be zero. Right? And this is actually a fully faithful embedding of this category. Sorry. Yes. So how is it? This is Dirac manifold, meaning the Dirac structure in the standard, in 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 in, 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 the, in the sum of this tangent and cotangent in the standard Quran algebra. Right? Yes. Yeah. So th this is all done so far in the standard Quran algebra. Right? There's very likely generalizations to more to other objects, but at the moment that's where we're operating. So, so what are powers? Do you I'm about to get to that. I'll explain it that in a moment. So she just asked, what are covers, right? And this turns out to inherit a topology. So if we want to do a site, then we need more than just a category. We need a topology. And that just means a notion of a covering. And I'm just going to do the stupid thing and say, well, it's a covering if it was kind of a covering over here. right? So C is a cover if. P of C is a cover. This turns out to work OK. So once we define a site, we can define stacks over that site. And if we do a whole bunch of work, we realize that the geometric stacks should correspond to the groupoids inside of this site. So when I say the groupoids inside of this site, I mean sort of a groupoid that really comes out of this thing. So we're going to make a definition, a D Lie groupoid is a groupoid internal to this category. So really what I mean, I mean that there is two Dirac manifolds, arrows and objects. And there are morphisms in this sense of those Dirac manifolds, which satisfy the groupoid axioms. Right. So it's a lot of data. Every single morphism comes with its own two form. Right. So sorry, the source and target is required for me to be. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we asked that the, the source and target are submergence. Thank you. Uh, just so that we can have our five for products. Sorry? Isn't that a matter? Inverses of no, no. I mean, it, 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 they it, they have sections <coughs> if they satisfy the groupoid axioms, but they don't. They're not necessarily submersions. It's, in other words, it's a Lie groupoid. Yeah, it's it's a Lie groupoid in this category. So when I say submersions too, I just mean project those maps into the category manifold. Is that a submersion? So like I said, there's a lot of data. And if you go through all the groupoid axioms, you, you come up with a ton of formulas for two forms, right? Because this composition rule means that if I want to check if a diagram commutes, I have some formula of two forms that has to you know, hold, right? 
And so I end up with a million of them, but it turns out it's not that bad because there's a simplification of this data, right? So if you don't like category theory this, that much, this is, this is the thing that's going to drastically simplify our definition. So Dealey groupoids are really the same thing as the following. It's a groupoid, or so a Lie groupoid, a Dirac structure, plus a pair of two forms on the space of arrows. And now I'm going to quickly define an auxiliary object because there's going to be a compatibility condition and the auxiliary object makes it easier to write those down. And so I'm going to define this capital omega to be the difference of tau and sigma. And so what are my compatibility conditions? Well, the first is that omega is multiplicative. Okay? And the second condition is that if I pull back the Dirac structure by the target, that that's going to be the same as pulling back the Dirac structure by the source, plus this gauge transformation, phi omega. Okay? So you should really think of this as saying that this Dirac structure on the objects is basic up to a gauge transformation. So it's implicitly closed if you forgot about, if you thought gauge transformations were all trivial, right? And this says that that factor that realizes that this is, this is implicitly closed up to this gauge transformation is itself multiplicative, okay? So, can I've introduced, you, sorry? Can you repeat this, what you said, just what you just said? So there's a simplicial differential for groupoids yep. on, well, usually it's defined for forms. You can try and define it for other objects, right? And so you can sort of define at the, le at the level of objects here by saying something is implicitly closed at the level of objects if you pull it back by the target, you pull it back by the source, and you get the same thing, right? But here I'm saying that this fails up to this gauge adjustment. Does that? So, so I guess this sigma and tau, are, those two forms come together with this source and tau. Yes. What, what, what about this two form uh, associated to multiple? They, they, the, all of the groupoid axioms give you formulas of two forms, and you can recover all of them in terms of sigma and tau. So that's, that's how I say that the, the data has been significantly simplified. Because it turns out all you need to do is specify sigma and tau, and asking that it be a groupoid means that all of the other two forms come out. They're yeah. decided by sigma. They are all decided by sigma and tau. So that's, that's what I mean by this is one-to-one -one correspondence. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I should give you an interesting example. And so this is the obvious example that I would want to bring up. Suppose you have a symplectic groupoid. Right? How do you do this? Well, if you've looked at symplectic groupoids long enough, you might remember that both of these properties hold for them. Right? And if you want to look at it in terms of that data, you can just take tau to equal omega, sigma to equal zero and Lm to just be the graph of pi sharp, right? So one nice thing about these D-Lee groupoids is they're not quite as rigid as symplectic groupoids. Uh, you can do a lot of operations with them that really are just forbidden if you want to do things with symplectic groupoids. Uh, so we have some more examples that are sort of opposite to this. Suppose you have g over m and tau. And then you have a two-form on the space of objects, right? Such that the pullback by the target of omega equals the pullback by the source. Then you can just take sigma to equal tau equals zero and Lm to be the graph of omega flat. Right? So, 
So in, in particular, if you assume that this is proper, and if this two form were a symplectic form, you, should, you could really think of this as a groupoid which presents a symplectic orbifold. Right? So the groupoids in this scenario, they don't just encompass symplectic groupoids. We can also have symplectic orbifold type objects. Okay. Let's look at part three, stacks. So like most of the other presenters, I'm not going to really give a detailed description of how to get stacks. So I apologize for this. Uh, but I think that it should be reasonably intelligible. So let's, let's first make a, a nice theorem that says that all of these things, that I, this category that I've chosen, actually works to do what I want it to do. So let's fix G and H pre-symplectic. Well, so I put pre, I put pre here in parentheses because it works just as well for pre-symplectic as for symplectic. Then, if you look at Morita equivalences from G to H, symplectic Morita equivalences or pre-symplectic Morita equivalences, those are the same thing as Morita equivalences from G to H inside of this category. So what's a Morita equivalence inside of this category? It's a bi-bundle internal to this category that satisfies some diagrams commuting, right? So this, like the groupoid, has a simplification. There's a proposition that makes these guys' geometry a little bit simpler, right? And this is just traditional Morita equivalence, a la Ping Shu, et cetera, right? So, this category does exactly what I want. It, Morita equivalences haven't changed as far as inflected groupoids are concerned. All right, so that motivates my definition. So given G, a D Lee groupoid, then B of G is just the category of G bundles. So when I say category of G bundles, I mean this is all done internally to this site, right? So in particular, every object in this category can be projected by the forgetful functor to a regular principal G bundle. But it has more data than just a regular principal G bundle. And there's a proposition that makes those guys' geometry a little bit simpler than just saying it's an internal object. For uh, for this side. Yeah. So the so a, a G bundle is just an object in my category plus morphisms which are thought of as the multiplication map, the anchor maps, all of those things, satisfying some diagrams commuting, which correspond to the axioms. Then I was wondering whether there is simplification, which is like in the case of uh, B equals five. Yes. Right? Yeah, there, there is a simplification uh, so that you can do the geometry a little bit like with, without having to think purely internally to this category. So since I only have 30 minutes, I don't have the time to give every simplification for these objects. Uh, so I'm going to write down, how much time do I have left? Five minutes? Okay. So So again, just like the... So this theorem is really kind of a corollary of this. Once, once you've proven this, this is not difficult. Uh, and that's just that the following are equivalent. G and H are Morita equivalent. And BG, so what is BG for a symplectic groupoid? It's just you view it as a D-Lee groupoid and then take B of that. Right? BG is essentially equivalent to BH. Right? 
as stacks over this site. Okay? So, are those five minutes for questions or five minutes for talking? Okay. <laughs> okay, so a few comments that I'd like to make is you might ask, what about twisted DRAC? And yes, you can make it work for twisted DRAC structures. There's, you, you have to change the category a little bit, but it works. To what about Dealey algebras? And yes, there's a notion of a Dealey algebra. I mean, I gave a geometric description of Dealey groupoids, and there's a way of recovering uh, some sort of infinitesimal objects, as you might imagine, using the theory of infinitesimal multiplicative form. Uh, and then the last comment that I'd like to make is that we just heard this talk by Marius about PCMTs, <laughs> PMCTs, uh, and those give rise to separated stacks. So that's another interesting direction that you could take this avenue of research is to look at what, what happens when you view PMCTs as separated stacks over this site. Okay, so that's all I have to say. Example two, which is an Atala group by over a symplectic, let's say symplectic map. Yes. Do you know any examples in your category of group lights over the symplectic manifold which are not Atala? I mean, so you, you can you can have like this you can construct such example. All you need is a groupoid and then a two form on the objects, which pulls back to the same thing by the source and target. A tal isn't actually necessary to ask for that to happen, right? So, for example, the action group void of a symplectic action. Yeah, for example, the action group void of a symplectic action. Yes. Um, the second part of the, uh, the, the last board, um, yes. what kind of equivalence exactly is, is there between the two? What, what kind of equivalence is this? Yeah. Uh, this is equivalent. This is. Uh, essential equivalence of stacks, or I mean, a lot of geometers like to call it isomorphism of stacks, but then category theorists always yell at me because they don't like the word isomorphism, right? Uh, but this is this is really the same kind of equivalence of stacks over manifolds that you would get. So that the, these two categories are essentially equivalent. And, and I have another question. So can you can you give some kind of idea? For example, one might have expected a theorem like this for just symplectic groupoids and symplectic Morita equivalences. But it's necessary for you to get this theorem to relax the Dirac. Yes. Can it's you very explain good. why? Um, yeah, I can actually. <laughs> so I, I, so th this, the way I've explained these things doesn't necessarily make it clear what motivated me to look at things this way, right? But here's, here's one reason that you could think of things in this manner, right? Right? So suppose you have a Morita equivalence of Poisson manifold, right? Now, the, the way this usual theory goes is the, the Morita equivalences that correspond to maps are the ones that come from split things, right? So suppose you have a splitting here, sigma, right? Then you get a map here. And the sorts of maps that you get here are exactly the maps that we find in our category of Dirac manifolds. That they're backwards Dirac up to a gauge transformation. And that gauge transformation is just the pullback of omega by sigma. Does that make sense? So that's one way of thinking why you need to relax to do your exercise. Okay. Uh, you mentioned as an example of the synthetic group. Mm -hmm. uh, the objects in your category are in your site are the Dirac manifold. Yes. I was wondering uh, about the, the case of presynthetic groups, how they, do they fit into your theory. It works fine. Yeah, 
so I, I, I didn't, I didn't actually say, it, but it, it, all, all of it works for pre-symplectic group weights. It's the exact same story. Is is, is it the case uh, that when you the Dirac structure is a Poisson structure, then this turns out to be some pre-symplectic group, or is it a relation? So. <coughs> I'm not 100% sure I understand, but it's, so it's possible to have a Dili groupoid whose space of objects is Poisson, but is not a symplectic groupoid. Not a pre-symplectic. That, that's not a pre-symplectic or really an anything groupoid, right? For example, if you take the identity groupoid over a Poisson manifold, this is an example of a Dili groupoid, right? So, so th th this, is, this is sort of a necessary example because you need identity groupoids if you want to view the objects in your site as Stacks themselves. Okay. Yeah. So, so, um, so, so uh, I was wondering. So you also have the, so, so for this model that you have three frequencies. And, uh, do you also have new frequencies uh, for the Lindy Tesman? Um, yeah, there, there's there's a sort of infinitesimal equal. There's in the paper. There's some discussion of infinitesimal. Uh, weak equivalences. So, so in that way, I guess um, you can get rid of um, integrability, huh? You can find a multi frequency between the icon without asking these guys. Um, yeah, so the, I mean that's. G and H and one. Yeah, that, that, that's one of the the research directions I'm interested in. Is you you have a sort of natural notion of that you can define from taking this point of view of more equivalence of non-integral things. And then you can ask, does that coincide with, for example, the paper that you have with person uh, uh, no seta and zoo, right? Uh, that gives a sort of principal actions of stacky groupoids point of view. And the question is, would that notion of Moria equivalence coincide with the, the one found in that paper? I don't know. I would very much like to check. <laughs> just one comment. I think the main, the full cool idea here is to take this side. Yes. And then it's very tempting to think, well, what about the process, like manifold distribution, think about distributions in group points. And what would be really cool if one could do is we have a notion of nice sites mm -hmm. so that we can talk about the points there and we have the algebraids and group points in the world and the probability. So that we can embed all the Yes. So that, that's another thing I'm sort of interested in. Uh, I so so far my, my interest has been in looking at specific sites that do the they tell you the right story. But you're right. There probably is some nice general theory that you can say for what sort of things work. Yeah, so you could start with the site, apply the apply these sorts of techniques and see what sort of geometries you have for the group points. <laughs>